Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about updating records with Entity Framework Core. So once again for those of you keeping track, this video is going to be covering the U in our CRUD acronym, which again CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. The CRUD acronym helps us identify the four different types of interactions with our data that we need to code for. So to update records with Entity Framework, the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually go and retrieve the record in its current state from the database. We're going to put that record into a variable that will then go and make the changes to the different properties on that variable. Now at this point, the DB context and the change tracker is not aware of the changes that you made to the record. So what you have to do is you actually pass that record back to the context calling the update method that exists on the DB set. And that DB set, of course, is the, uh, is the DB set of the different collection of objects that contains that data type that you, you know, initially got the record for. So you pass the record as a parameter to the update method on the DB, on the DB set. And now the change tracker and, of course, the context is aware of those changes now, or at least it's set all the properties on that object to a state of, uh, of changed. And now, in order for you to commit those changes back to the database, you, of course, need to call the save changes method. Now, I will tell you that there is an alternative method of updating records that does not require you to go and retrieve the record from the database first. But I am going to caution you against using that method, at least for now. The reason for that is that the attach method and the entry method, which you can find online, uh, actually overwrites the existing record. And what you can end up doing uh, using those methods is actually orphaning records. Because if you don't give all of the values that you need to in the record that you're uh, passing to it, and let's say you forget a foreign key, for example, that points to some other table, well, now you have effectively orphaned that record. So you've lost database integrity, you've orphaned the record, and now you have to go back and try to fix it, and it can be a complete mess. Additionally, if there's any sort of auto seeding or auto incrementation on any of those values or you have a calculated property somehow, uh, you can also run into problems when you try to send that update to the database. It'll kick out some errors. So at least for right now, I'm going to caution you against using those methods and uh, reserve them for only those times that you're absolutely certain that you need to do it. In the meantime, this method that I'm going to show you is probably the safest bet to make sure that you update properly and you don't lose the integrity of your database. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and take a look. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and create a new action on our customer's controller. So we're going to do public I action result, and we're going to call this update. If I can spell this right, update customer. There we go. And our update customer action, the first thing that we need to do with it is go and retrieve the current record. So retrieve the record in its current state before we've applied any changes to it. So this is going to be a dim customer because, again, we're just going to go get the customer in its current state. So we're going to say this dim customer variable, let's call it updated customer. We're going to set it equal to. We need to go grab that record. So we use the first or default method, like what we did right here in our index action. So we're going to do DB. We're going to go to the dim customer DB set. And on there, we're going to do a first or default. OK, so first or default. And we need to go ahead and pass in a lambda to this first or default. And I just kind of want to point this out. I typically use just a single letter to be that object that uh, gets iterated, you know, with. Uh, you could certainly do customer, you know, as you could type the whole thing out, say customer goes to. That's perfectly legitimate, but, you know, that's an awful lot of typing to do. So that's why you'll find most people who write Lambda expressions just use one, two, or three letters to indicate what that object is. So we'll do C goes to C. And we're going to need to find a unique record here, and we're going to go find Mr. Tom Burke. Uh, and Mr. Tom Burke, we know, 
is uniquely identified by this customer alternate key because he's the only one that we gave an alternate key of I don't care. So let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. We'll do C goes to C customer alternate key equals I don't care. All right, so now that we've got Mr. Burke in this updated customer variable, now we need to go ahead and make the changes on this object that we want to apply back to the database. Now I could go ahead and make changes to like the title, first name, last name, or anything else, even the customer alternate key. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a piece of information to this that's missing. So we're gonna say updated customer email address equals, so even though this is an update, essentially I'm updating a field on an already existing record. So it sounds kind of weird, but I'm adding information by updating it. <laughs> I know that sounds a little weird, but okay. So we're going to set the email address to Tom Burke at home.net. Okay. And now we've made the changes on the updated customer object, but the DB context and the change tracker is not aware of those changes yet. So what we need to do is on the DB context, we're going to look to the DB or dim customer DB set. And then on this dim customer DB set, we're going to call the update method. And you can see uh, in the IntelliSense for our update method that we need to pass in a type of dim customer. So let's go ahead and add or pass in our updated customer. And now that should save the changes at least to the context. And now our change tracker is aware of the changes. But what we need to do now is in order to propagate those changes back to the database, we call the save changes method. Okay. Now that the information has been stored to our database, I'm just going to go ahead and call the same command here. We're just going to return a redirect to action to our index action. And I'm going to once again pass in the I don't care key to our index action. And that should give us a view of the same Mr. Tom Burke, but now we should see the email address. So let's go ahead and save our, uh, our classes and let's go ahead and run our application. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to customers, update customer. And now What's happening is, of course, we're making the changes to Mr. Burke, both in the context and then those things are being saved to the database. And then we get redirected to the index action. And lo and behold, we can now see that Mr. Tom Burke has an email address of tomburke at home.net. And if you want to take it one step further and just double check the work here, we can see if we do a select looking for customer alternate key, I don't care, we can see right there is the email address that we added. Now you don't have to do just the one property at a time. You could of course make all sorts of changes. So we could say, uh, let's updated customer. Let's set his phone number equal to, uh, five, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, or eight, nine. <laughs> there we go one too many numbers in there and we'll also say updated customer dot number of cars owned let's set that why not equal to two okay save that and let's run our application again now i'm going to call the same action so we're going to do customers update customer and now we're going to add the telephone number as well as the uh, set the number of cars owned. So there's the phone number that we can see there because our view already has that phone number. And I can, of course, go over here and reissue a select query. And if we look for the total number of cars, let's see if I can find it here. There we go. Number cars owned is two. So we can change the data, multiple fields on that record at once. We don't have to do it one at a time. So there you go. If you guys have any questions or comments about this, uh, about this video, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section below. 
If you liked this video, please feel free to, you know, give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I always like having more subscribers. And until I see you guys in the next video, I hope you guys have a great, wonderful day.